they will evolve from the Okay, we use our feet. Just keep it pressed okay. and leave it here. Then you go forward and, and backwards. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Morning, everyone. So, my name is Rodrik Ido. I'm a senior lecturer and a researcher in the National University of Agriculture in Guinea. And this work that I have the pleasure to present to you was in the frame of a PhD work of the first offer of this study, which is already published. So it's entitled, Coupling Genetic Structure and Ecological Niche Model in Casing Groundnuts in West Africa. The outline of the presentation is as follows. First, we present the context. Then we follow the data and methods used we will follow with the main finding and some take-home messages. Regarding the context, often crops are really important resources in smallholder farmer food system, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, because they are seen as staple crop with high nutritional and economic value and largely grown in marginal area. Unfortunately, they are neglected in the mainstream research agenda, <clears throat> and data regarding those species are scarce about their potential to withstand current and future climate variation. Moreover, <coughs> defining how and where both species will adequately respond to environmental variation is a central topic, especially regarding plant research, plant science research. So this study, which was implemented in 2021 and published in 2022, <coughs> uses casing groundnuts, scientifically named as Macrotiloma geocarpum, as a case study to examine the response of this crop to future climate using genetic information coupled with ecological niche modeling approach. So this is what we call Macrotiloma geocarpum, casing groundnuts. And across West Africa, we have six land races of it. And the land race is a domesticated, or locally adapted, often traditionally recognized uh, variety of a species. And we had this spread across climatic zone in West Africa. So this is the area that we cover for the study. It come from Burkina Faso to Benin, Togo, and Ghana. On feed, a total of 361 accessions of casing groundnuts were collected from those countries, and the data were used. Leaves, nyan leaves of the species of the land races were collected and used for DNA extraction and other lab manipulation. And the program structure was used to assign those individuals collected on the ground to different genetical clusters and different genetic analyses were performed, such as molecular analysis for viruses, FWAR, F tests, and etc. Other analyses were performed on it. As regards the ecological niche modeling part, during accession collection, occurrence data of the land races were also collected on the ground, also gathered from the labs, and added to online databases. In addition to that, we also collect environmental data, especially climate and soil data. Climate data were mainly bioclimatic data gathered from AFRICLIM websites. And for soil data, we got them from ISRIC websites. So those data were processed and the model were run using the maximum entropy methods. Uh, to see, uh, to test for equivalency, identity of a niche between population and also species and the population, we use the Schoener D, Schoener index and the similarity D index. All these were implemented using NTBOS with R software. In addition, we also implemented the MOF analysis, which was used to describe the changes in the distribution pattern between the calibration area and the validation area, especially between the present and the future condition. What did we get as main finding? 
it's come out that, uh, sorry, this was the study area that we cover, and I can show you that we have the population spread across all this area. So getting back to results, we found out that despite the low level of diversity that we found within the Kessin Grand Dot, two main populations were discovered for it, the population one and the population two. So here on this graph, you have a two population from the green and the blue, and both, all those land races were spread across both populations. So on this, you, you can have a vertical line which represents individual within population, and those with more than one color I share genetic information with other population. So we can see a random distribution of land races within population of the species. And this was shown with, in this map. You can have a population one in, oh, sorry. You can have population one in blue colors, population two in green colors, and the species, and the species, uh, data that we collected on the species from JB on red colors. And here are the five zones that you have. We have a tropical rainforest, we have a southern Guinean zone, we have a northern Guinean zone, we have a southern Sudanian zone, and a northern Sudanian zone. So data were collected across all this area and model also run across the area. Regarding the ecological niche modeling, both climate data and soil layer were important in running the model. So you may have for each population of the and the species, different combination of climate and soil layers, as shown with, on these graphs. This is for the species overall, this is for the population one, and this one applies for the population two. And data there are the contribution of each of the variable to the model. Regarding the identity or similarity of niche among the species and each of the population, we noticed that niche between the species and the genetical population were not identical at all, but they were similar. On each of these graphs, you can find the environmental space for the, for the species, the environmental space for one of the population, then the difference between environmental space of the species and the population, and here the correlation cycle coming from the principal component analysis describing the geographic distribution of the environmental layers. And these graphs also apply for other combination that the species and population one and the population one and population two. When we take into account the spatial distribution of the suitable area for the cultivation of a species and each of its population, we found globally that we have large area with suitable condition for the cultivation of the species and each of a genetic population. So here you have for the continuous map for the species, for the present day, for the future one, and for the future two. And here you have a binary map for the, for the species, sorry, for the present day, for the future one, and future two. And the coming maps show the same trend for the population one and also for the population two of the species. So we have similar, uh, similar uh, finding for them. <clears throat> when we consider the MOP analysis, the results indicated some dissimilarity from the extrapolated condition in the two feature scenario. That means when we consider Mapping the spatial distribution of species in the present with the future, we have some area in red which represents uh, dissimilarity, the complete dissimilarity in the map area of a spatial uh, distribution, and blue area which looks like a similar area where the species is found in the present and also could be found in the future as a suitable area for cultivation. So this map is really useful for strategies, uh, to, uh, strategies towards a valorization of such species, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. And I can tell you that this is one of the most uh, expensive uh, grand dots, kind of grand dots that we have in sub-Saharan Africa. It can cost from one euro in availability season to four or five euros, sometimes six euros when it's not available. So this is really important 
uh, for decision making regarding this species, especially expansion is cultivation area. So what can we have as take home message? Uh, when we use our approach, we identify two genetic population and also cultivable area for the gem plus and, also, and our result also enhance the available gem plus and better direct breeding priority for the future of such species. And our study highlights the importance of incorporating genetic data into ecological niche modeling to obtain a finer information for future distribution and also explore the implication for agricultural adaptation with a particular focus on identifying priority action, especially regarding orphan crops, conservation and breeding in sub-Saharan Africa. And our overall trend shown by the result indicate an increase in the climate suitability for the species cultivation in West Africa. So next to this research, what we have to do next is to set experimental, feed experimental on the ground to see how well the area that we identify as suitable to host the species will really respond with the time. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.